With the release of Avengers Infinity War, I thought I would try something a little bit different and rank all 14 Marvel Cinematic Universe directors from the worst to the best. Now, before I get started, go ahead and tell me down below in the comment section, how do you rank the Marvel directors? I'll have a list of them down below in the comment section, just in case you forgot some of their names as well as which movie they directed, so you can put your list together, a little bit of a resource for you. But the key thing is, let's have a nice, lively discussion about these directors and what we think they brought to the table. Now, as I go into my ranking, what I'm looking at is the quality of the movies that they made, how big of an impact that they made on the MCU, and how do they fit into the MCU? Have they made contributions, those types of things? That's my rating scale. One final thing before we get started, this video is brought to you by my supporters over on Patreon. You can see their names down below. Thank you guys so much for your support. With that said, let's get started. Coming in in last place is Alan Taylor for Thor The Dark World. To start things off, I don't think this is a terrible movie. I don't think it's a total train wreck or anything like that. I just think of all the movies in the MCU, it's kind of the most mediocre and forgettable of the bunch. And a lot of that goes back to the director that just didn't bring a flavor to the movie. Depending on which scene you were in, the tone would shift pretty drastically from kind of a Lord of the Rings type introduction, then kind of rom-com stuff back on Earth, and then it gets into buddy comedy stuff when Loki comes into the mix. And it just shifts directly quite a bit. There doesn't feel like there's a thorough line throughout it. When big emotional scenes happen, they all kind of fall a little bit flat. So the overall impact is a movie that just feels mediocre, never hits as hard as it should, and doesn't have anything that makes a distinctiveness to it. So for me, Alan Taylor comes in last place. At number 13 is Louis Leterrier for The Incredible Hulk. Now I've repeatedly said I actually really like The Incredible Hulk movie. I don't have any big issues with it. I think there's a bunch of great sequences in it. The cast is great inside of it. The problem here as to why this one's at the bottom isn't really that he did a bad job directing the movie. Nothing like that really at all from my perspective. It's that this movie is widely regarded as the black sheep of the MCU and largely that's because of the tone of the movie. It does not feel like an MCU movie. Some of that's also the Edward Norton thing, but in, totally speaking, it doesn't have the humor. It's just kind of, even the look of it, it's a little bit darker in the, the visually speaking. And so all in all, it doesn't feel like a movie inside of the MCU, even though it is very much inside of the MCU. And that means just kind of directorially speaking, this is an oddball inside of this franchise. And so for me, that's really the reason that I put him very low on the list is that his directing didn't make an impact on what they decided to do with the MCU going forward, so he comes in in next to last place. Number 12 is Shane Black for Iron Man 3. This is another talented director that has made a lot of great movies, written some amazing scripts, and put kind of his own spin on the MCU. If you look at the nature of the humor, what Robert Downey Jr. is doing in this movie, it's very Shane Black type dialogue. He's also known for trying to subvert expectations of the genre, putting twists and turns in the mix. And so if you watch Iron Man 3 as a Shane Black take on Iron Man, the movie's quite good. It's very much, if you, especially if you like Shane Black's style, you should thoroughly enjoy this movie. The problem is, is that when you're trying to subvert the expectations of a genre and a franchise, you can feel out of place inside of that franchise. And that's very much kind of what happens with this movie. A lot of people got a sour taste in their mouth after the Mandarin twist in it. Other types of things just made people not really care much for this movie. So he's a little bit lower on this list. At number 11 is John Watts for Spider-Man Homecoming. Now, if you've seen any of my previous rankings or reviews, you know I loved Spider-Man Homecoming. I just thought it was an absolute blast, a great new type of movie inside of the MCU. And so in that regards, John Watts did a great job just making a fun movie that uh, just gave us a new perspective on the MCU from a high schooler's perspective. The reason I have him a little bit lower on the list is the simple fact that I don't know what he brought to the table in his kind of directorial style. There's not a distinct flavor that I get from him in the way this movie was made. The movie's a ton of fun. It follows the templates of the MCU. The MCU tends to be fun. It tends to be funny. The script, I know what it did and put a humor in. I know what the cast did. I just don't see kind of his distinct thumbprint on this movie. So perhaps in the sequels, perhaps if I see some other things, I'll get a better f taste for what his, he brings to the mix, what his cooking style is. At number 10 is Peyton Reed for Ant-Man. Now this one's really tricky to rank because 
we don't really know how much was Edgar Wright and how much was Peyton Reed. Edgar Wright worked on the movie for like eight years, did some test footage showing kind of what they could do with Ant-Man and that stuff's available on YouTube. You can see what it looked like. And then we get the final product. And in many regards, it looks like that test footage we saw before. And so the movie's cool. I like to enjoy the movie quite a bit, but I don't know which one is which and who to give all of the credit for on all the little details that happened. So all I know is they made a very fun movie that fits pretty well into the Marvel template, the Marvel formula. This is one of the ones that definitely has that origin story vibe to it. But another solid entry, a guy that brought what it needed to be brought to the table and with some very cool visuals to the way they decided to to do the shrinking effect with the deep depth of field and stuff that they did. So very cool uh, movie under his belt and hopefully a second one will be another solid entry. My number nine pick is Scott Derrickson for Doctor Strange. Now this one was another one that's a little bit tricky for me because I love the visuals. If this was based purely on the way he decided to bring the magic to the screen in all the different regards, whether you're talking about the spinny sparky stuff, the kaleidoscope world effect, the bendy city stuff, Whatever you're talking about, if it was just on the visuals, this is like a top five in what he was able to bring with the creativity and working with the visual effects team. However, this is, of all the movies in the MCU, this is the one that feels the most stock template to me. You can just feel them trying to take this weird character and make it for a broad audience so they kind of squished it through the Marvel machine and gave us the movie that they gave us. And so in that regard, I had to pull them back just a little bit. Creative visually, this guy's top five. On the storytelling side of what he was able to bring to it, a little bit lower on my list. Number eight is Kenneth Branagh for Thor. I love what he was able to do with kind of bringing this sense of Shakespearean grandeur to Asgard, bringing in talent like Anthony Hopkins to play Odin, and you just get the bigness that he's able to bring in those types of scenes in the movie, having kind of these deep emotions, true drama with family dynamics, royalty, all those types of elements. Whether he struggles a little bit is having a cohesive film throughout it. It feels a little bit too jarring as Thor is sent to Earth and it becomes a fish out of water comedy. To some extent, that's what the movie's supposed to do. It's supposed to be like this jarring transition, but a movie needs to flow smoothly and be able to shift between different kind of aspects. It didn't do that as well as I think it could have. You can tell he was just most comfortable working on kind of the grandeur of Asgard and in doing so established that side of the Marvel Cinematic Universe for us. And so because of that, he made a pretty big mark just with that Asgardian elements that he created there. Number seven is Joe Johnston for Captain America, the first Avenger. Now I've said this many times, the first hour of this movie is some of my favorite stuff in the entire MCU. And Joe Johnston does this great job of creating a period, like you feel like you're back into the 1940s, but in the MCU, it has a comic booky feel, feels part of this universe. He takes us back to this world of a more simple time. And so we get, in many ways, one of the most simple heroes inside of the MCU in Captain America. So also inside of this, he's the guy that gives us Hydra and builds all these kind of worlds and different elements to it that establish so much of what came in the future. There are all sorts of elements that 19 or not 15 films later tie back into things and even inside of Infinity War. All that goes back to Joe Johnston and what he's able to bring to a film. So he came in at number seven. Number six is Taika Waititi for Thor Ragnarok. It's been said many, many times, but this guy made one very funny and very fun movie. He took the Thor franchise, which had been a little bit stale. The first one was a little bit mixed, and the second one is largely regarded as one of the worst movies in the MCU, and just turbocharged it with fun and energy, and you just see his sense of humor all over this film, his energy, everything that he brings to it, whether in the visual style, the synthesized score, the use of the immigrant song, it's just all of it has such a kind of a potent, distinct flavor to it. It's very much an extreme opposite from what I talked about with Alan Taylor and Thor The Dark World, where it was just kind of mediocre, bland. This is flavorful. And that's where some people maybe even didn't like the movie because it was just so distinct in its style. 
But all that goes back to Taika Waititi. This is a guy that kind of came out of nowhere and just made his mark. At number five is Ryan Coogler with Black Panther. Almost as a counterbalance to the carefree nature of Taika Waititi's Thor Ragnarok, the next movie that came out was Black Panther, which is one of the most mature and adult films inside of this franchise. A lot of that goes back to the nature of the storytelling where it's about a king and its kingdom. It's a tale all about someone trying to figure out his responsibility, his place in the world, understanding the differences and the mistakes of the past and learning to grow into the future, the complexity of the plot that kind of goes on with different worldviews, just in a way that you don't see in very many of the movies inside of the MCU. But the big thing here that he just brought to this was great world building. This is a movie that had to teach us a lot of stuff about Wakanda, and he does a great job of doing it that's engaging and fun and takes us on a journey all along the way. Ryan Coogler kind of came from a boxing movie to giving us a big comic book movie, and there's a reason that this movie made a ton of money. My number four pick is James Gunn for Guardians of the Galaxy and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Now, these are this is a weird franchise. The Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, kind of a, in regards to the different characters inside of the MCU, this is probably the most obscure of the properties, as, at least to the general public, and when you just hear about it, talking raccoon with machine machine guns, talking tree that only says I am Groot. It's weird, weird stuff. And then the movie came out and he managed to take this fairly obscure property of the broad audience, this very weird, and make it palatable to almost everyone so that everyone fell in love with these characters almost instantly. He just captures these characters and makes their dynamics, their chemistry so good that you want to spend more time around them. He finds a way to give each one of the characters distinct moments in the action, distinct senses of humor, and then just infuses it with this the music that he chooses to use. And all that goes back to James Gunn who just brought his unique sensibilities, his unique sense of humor, his odd way of seeing things and taking a bunch of weirdos and oddballs and making them people that we just fell in love with. Bringing us into the top three is Jon Favreau for Iron Man 1 and 2. This is the guy that kicked off the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. He cracked the code with all the producers and everyone of how to take a comic book movie and make it kind of serious, kind of based in reality, totally sci-fi, fun, all at the same time. I mean, it has its own way of moving quickly, bringing you in, making you love these characters, have a ball the whole entire movie. And that just goes to Jon Favreau, just bringing in energy to everything that he does. It captures all the things that you really want out of a blockbuster. Great big action sequences, sharp sense of humor, characters with amazing chemistry, all going back to Robert Downey Jr. and what he's able to do, and then having little heart felt moments. So John Favreau is so pivotal in creating this Marvel Cinematic Universe that we love. So he, of course, makes it into the top three. Our runner up is going to be Joss Whedon for the Avengers and Avengers Age of Ultron. When they first announced Joss Whedon is directing this movie, I was so skeptical. And I'm a like long time Joss Whedon fan, watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel, Firefly, all those shows back in the day. And still when they announced him, I was like, ooh, is this? That's not a great idea. I don't think, that, what do they think that they're doing here? And then I saw the first movie and he was just such a perfect perfect choice. And what he's great at doing is taking a bunch of characters and making an ensemble work and have great witty banter between all the people. That's his thing that he does. And when you think about what the Marvel Cinematic Universe stands for, that's it. That's what this universe is, is it's this thing where they actually are able to join all these franchises together and have fun doing it with great characters, with amazing chemistry. And the person that kind of upped it to that next level to what the Marvel Cinematic Universe really became was Joss Whedon. Because most of phase one before Avengers, standalone movies, little interactions, little bit of sharing, post credit scene, things like that, Nick Fury showing up. And then the Avengers happened and he went, wait, there's a way to bring all these franchises and tones together, and it's phenomenal. So for me, Joss Whedon is easily the second most important one. But easily for me, the duo that had to be in first place was the Russo brothers. If you look at all of the MCU, there's a bunch of people that made one great movie. Generally speaking, they get one great one is what they did. Russo brothers giving us 
three great ones and they're all different from each other. It's not like just to get what they're all the same thing. They all have their distinct flavor to what they do and the way they shoot action, the way they like to do complex storytelling. But Captain America Winter Soldier is very distinct from Captain America Civil War. And Civil War had this whole different layer of bringing all these characters together in a more serious way, where Joss Whedon did bring them all together in funny way, in fun way. Russo Brothers brought them together in the conflicting way. And then this past weekend, they took it to this whole other level, 24 main cast members on the poster with Infinity War, so many plot lines, the biggest movie inside of the MCU, and if you watch my previous videos, you know I love that movie. They absolutely pulled it off. So that's three different great movies, three of the best movies inside of the MCU, all from this one duo, these two guys. And so for me, without question, they are the guys that should come out on top. They, they've done a great job with their storytelling and just really taking the MCU to where it's gone in phases two and three on a story level, not just a tone level, but on the story level. They're the ones that have really made that happen. So there you have it. There's my list of how I would rank all 14 directors inside of the MCU from the worst to the best. How about you tell me down below? Remember, I did put a list of the directors down in the comment section with which movies they did. Let's have a nice, lively discussion. And if you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. Any movie reviews, TV reviews, ranking videos. Key thing is, I don't want to just talk about movies. I want to talk about movies with you. So join me down in the comment section. Let's talk about directors. Do something a little bit different on this one. I thought this would be a little bit interesting to do this. And as always, thank you for watching.